G'day, I'm Justin Lepich. Wait, no, I'm not. Well, am I? I am very ginger. I am also James Clements. Welcome to the AFL Today Show. We're here to make footy a little bit more fun, aren't we? It's the Thursday team show. It's my favourite show, Stats Boy. It really is. We go through it all. We talk about the games. It's Everything. sick. Everything's feeling good. Then it goes all wonky. Anyway, this is the greatest game in the world. It's AFL footy. Joining me, of course, is local weirdo footy nuff, AFL experts, some might call him, including his mum and dad. It's the Stats Boy, Lee McGallion. As always, uh, I thought you were going to say it's your favourite show because Alex isn't on it, but uh, wh- who is your favourite ginger player of all time? That's what you were talking about. Justin Lepich is probably up there. Mm, probably look, a Carlton player. Maybe Car- current Carlton player. Might be Manny Cottrell. Just Cottrell, saying. yeah. Love yeah. you, Cotters. Yeah. Love you, Cotters. Uh, anyway, we're going to cover off a lot of stuff today. So let's get into it. I mean, you got to subscribe to our YouTube channel before anything else. Yes. You also got to star, like, subscribe, follow AFL today across all the socials. Now that's done, let's get into it. Footy's back, round 16. Yes. It's only a third of the season left, Stats Boy. I know. We've still got finals. It's all good. Plenty. Plenty of time. Well, you don't have I finals. I don't have finals. <laughs> do, am I allowed to be on the show if my no, team's only finals? Oh, all right. You dropped. Right. Uh, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do some news before we get into the teams and the games. Uh, Andrew Gillen Dillon. Can't afford a haircut, but he's investigating interest and would love a state of origin rep game for the AFL. I saw that before. It is very loose, but they asked him about it and he's like, I would love a bit of state of origin. I was like, good, because every time uh, Gil was asked about it, he sort of shut it down. Whereas Andrew Dillon said he's going to investigate with the players and things like that. It'd be awesome. They had 90,000 at the G last night for state of origin uh, NRL, obviously. Imagine the AFL, you'd be packing it out easy. Would you? Well, I think so. You don't think so? Better investigate it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You don't think so? Seriously, if Andrew Gillen Dillon just wants to give me like a bunch of money, I'll invest. I'll just start asking punters on the street. Should we have State of Origin? They're like, yeah, Jim. Yeah, of, of course. course. I'm like, yeah, all right, let's do it. Hey, Andrew Gillen. Dillon, what's going on, man? I've got all my money. Everybody wants it. Just yeah, do it. He's just like, do it. all right, Jim. Yeah. Sick. I'm like, off there we go. go. It is always fun because State of Origin for league, like, it it's just been works. for ages, yeah. yeah. It just works. Yep. And it doesn't quite seem as though in a very long NRL season – that the queries, the qualms, oh, we've always got to worry about injuries mm. during the state of origin. It's not quite as uh, hysterical, I no, think, as the AFL. AFL yeah. So oh, we couldn't possibly, they could get injured. The <laughs> league dude's like, let's go. Yeah. yeah that, right? And it's more probably, uh, what's the word, patriotic for their states compared to Victoria or things because like that they, for AFL. But because they never cowered it out of it. No. Like we have. But we used to, yeah, we used to be awesome. So I, I would love to see it, but depends. It probably comes down to the players, as Andrew Dillon did say. I also like, look, we can talk about state of origin as much as we want. There is just a very simple way, I think, to go about these things. Just go, you know what? We talked about, this got brought up last week. Just yep. a, a break in the middle of the season for everybody. Just do that. Yeah. Everybody gets a bite. We don't have to have roll. We don't have like, to have 62 love, buys. Oh, my God. Thing is, what, how's the roll? The home at Donut Machine. Footy, footy, yeah, footy, yeah, footy, footy, footy. What we do instead is you just have the EJ Witten legend game as yep. a massive thing on a Saturday night. Get 90,000 of that. I can't believe they don't do that anymore. They haven't done it's it for chaos. a couple of years. That's been very weird. Just go hammer and tongs. Yeah. Give everybody the week off. EJ Witten legend game. Everybody can just chill. Just have that one week where you're like, oh, where's the footy? I'd be angry for about a week. Yeah. I'd lose it, but then there's still footy on the weekend at some point. Exactly. Maybe we should have some sort of curtain raiser on the Friday night, one on the Saturday, something on Women, the Sunday. A women's rep game or something. Women's yeah, rep game. That'd be great. doesn't matter. It's not rocket surgery, Andrew Gill and <laughs> Dylan. Sort it out, mate. Other news. I'm cooked after a massive NBA draft day. You are. I don't know how your voice is still going. I I've been talking I for that. five hours at this point today. <laughs> and the buddy Johnny Furby still hasn't got picked. Get him picked. Get him, just get him out there for Carlton. Just like, <laughs> yeah. can we pick him? <laughs> what is he? Six foot six uh, or seven or something? With pick number 31 in the NBA <laughs> draft, the Carlton Blue select, Johnny Furphy. And Where I'm just standing on, hey! Johnny, hey, Tins, come with me, boy. <laughs> Off we go. Anyway, Pies fans should be getting excited. Why is that stats, boy? Oh, you got Dugowie and Pendles both back in this week, uh, which we'll get into the teams in a, in a little moment. I like that. They're going okay. up north. The goal he didn't I think go they to Bali. Want to go, I think they just want to go get warm. <laughs> yeah, possibly. The guy didn't go to Bali apparently last week, whereas a lot of uh, other players did. If he did, I don't reckon he would have been back this week. Okay. <laughs> Do you have proof that he didn't go? I don't, but I. They did. Some of the reporters said 
he was advised not to, whereas all the other players were like, ah, you can go. Do you reckon he's allowed back in? No, I mean, yeah, maybe he's not allowed there for other reasons. I Indonesian. Feel Jordan Dego has got a bit of a vibe where he's not allowed on Jetstar flights. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. He can afford probably better than Jetstar anyway. Maybe. <laughs> other news. George Wardlaw, the oh. warlord. This might put a bit of a dent in his rising star chances here, stats boy, because he's out for the next two games after getting concussed at training where he was spewing on the side. Whoever concussed him at training should be dropped from the club. That is a joke. You can't hurt our best player or second best player the last like three weeks. He's been awesome this year. I still think he'll win Rising Star. It's only two weeks because he's still going to finish off the season. All right, but gutted because he had two weeks with the new uh, concussion protocols as well. Used to be one week. Not good. This is all Jeremy Cameron's fault. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, he's done something. Yeah, we'll go Uh, and get him. Anyway, tough one for the Warlord. So how does that sit with your Rising Star noms? What do you reckon? Oh, I honestly think he's... A fair bit ahead because in terms of like the odds, it's like a dollar fifty to ten bucks. It will definitely shorten whoever who have you got out, out there that we talked about. Darcy Wilson, Ollie Dempsey. I think he's been still a lot better than them. And all of the other people around the rising star have missed games as well. And he hasn't really missed any. So I reckon Dempsey can give it a shake. Dempsey could, but he's also missed like three or four games this year as well. So yeah, it'll be interesting. Last one. Uh, other little bits and bobs. Mitch Lewis is going to spend another week playing for the Box Ooh. Hill Hawks instead of coming back this week. They just want to get him right. Um, also, they're flying play. at the moment, so that, that's yeah. okay, yeah. Uh, Lucky Schultz had too many bintangs. <laughs> don't know if he actually went to Bali. He just might have been. I know Collingwood players did go to Bali, but he's, he's, he's sick. So. Don't eat the street meats. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing, Lucky? He just no got, street meats. Had some water, no good. So he's out with gastro. and like, Gastro. Fly. No, we don't know. <laughs> fly? Flea? Fly? Fly, fly. Fly McRae was out there. He's going, yeah, he had a bit of gastro. It's a bit rough. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we know. We know. Yeah. <laughs> I've got two small children. I know. Yeah. Oh, God, I know. It's a weekly, weekly thing. But Lockie Schultz, it's like, I don't know. Is this Bintang related? Is it street it might, meats related? I don't know. No one knows. I, I checked his Insta. Nothing nothing on there. So we, we oh, don't know. Just creeping on him. Good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Newshound stats boy. Uh, Tom Barras reckons he wants to be an eagle for life, which is weird because he's a man. <laughs> Jeez. That is the worst dad joke going around. I mean, I want to be a fighter jet, bro. <laughs> I didn't even read that on the right. Don't you want to be a dinosaur? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, why not? Yeah. What do you want to be when you grow up? A fire truck. I want to be George Wardlaw. <laughs> <laughs> but Tom Barras, look, I love it because this is the thing. Like West Coast Eagles, we've already talked about Harley Reid earlier this week. $18 million for 10 years, whatever. But people keep circling around like, oh, Tom Barras, Tom Barras. He's a good like, player. He's a good player. I, I, I like that he wants to stay there. And he's like, I want to stay. And you're like, that's kind of Which nice. Eagles player is the most like an eagle? I'd say yo, he's very pointy, yo. pointy face. Harley Reid's got, Harley like Reed's the, got the hair. Yeah. The hair sort of flies out yeah. the side. You said mind. you want to be an eagle. I Not Jack Darling. No, he's a bear. He's <laughs> an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> he's a very muscly elephant. Yeah. Uh, and Dylan Grimes is done for the season, not going to be up for selection because he's uh, had back surgery. So the big question is whether or not he comes back. That might be him done. They, I saw uh, Adam Ruse was talking on TV just before saying his future will be discussed at the end of the year, Tough. which – Anytime people are talking about that, ugh, that's not a, you don't want to hear that. Hey, Stats guy, we're going to discuss your future <laughs> Whoa, at the end of the season. Right. That's all right. I've still got it. I've still got it six months. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's one. <laughs> all right. Let's do it. Time for round 16. Game previews. Let's go. Previews. Previews. Friday night. Friday night. Foot. I don't like singing the actual Friday night footy song. Because <laughs> it should be preferred. Thursday. <laughs> I much yeah. preferred singing the Thursday night footy song as a piss take of the Friday night footy I song. I agree. And now I'm just stuck here going, Friday night footy. Yeah, maybe we need a new Friday night one. Waiting no day for Friday night. There we go. That's the Sunday night football <laughs> oh, yeah. for NFL. Yeah. I like it. See, I'm just going to take something, screw with it a little bit. It makes it fun. I knew you'd be on straight, straight onto that. That was good. Brisbane, a 30 and a half point favourites over the Melbourne Demons up at the Gabatoire. The Gabatoire is back. We had a chat with Callum Dick yesterday yes. talking about the Gabatoire. We think it is back. 7.40 Friday night. The over-under in this one is 168 and a half, Stats Boy, which feels pretty generous to Melbourne the way that they've sort yeah, of Yeah, but Brisbane could get there by themselves. Brisbane might. Yeah, put, look, close to it. We've had games between these two teams that have been pretty chaotic. Mm-hmm. Uh, Very, you might the remember <laughs> the lights went out last year. That was year. nuts. Was that last year? Towards the end of the I think year. it was last yeah. year. Absolute chaos stuff. Uh, I'm pretty excited for this game for the simple fact that great kit matchup. Yep. You know how I love my kit matchups. And we're going to learn a very large amount about the resiliency of the Melbourne Football Club. Yes, we, we, we really are. I'll, I don't like it when people say Melbourne Football Club, but when like the Melbourne Demons just sound silly sometimes. You go, Melbourne Demons. And they sort of <laughs> tend to not call themselves. Anyway. No, they do tell, yeah, they say MFC. But the Brisbane like sort of offense has been absolutely firing, oh, as we mentioned. Awesome. So 
The over under, look, it just sort of feels like it's being kind of generous towards Melbourne more than anything after mustering what? We've broken this time, time and time again. 70 against the Ruse last week, 51 before that, yeah. 49. 100 against the Saints, 70 against West Coast, 76 against the Blues, 74 against the Cats. Like, that's brutal. So, but I think I think the over unders like that because Brisbane have been what did they get they got one fifty two against Port themselves. Yep. And I think Melbourne are, are worse off than Port. So if they get around one fifty, then Melbourne only have to get three goals. <laughs> the D's are the third yeah. best defense though. Lions yes. are the fourth best defense. So yes. that's kind of like the weird thing. It's only the weird part of it. Yeah. Really, uh, two really strong defenses. So give us some stats, Das Boy. Yeah. So Brisbane uh, obviously won. Uh, actually, I haven't done this one, but oh my god. Have won the last meeting 20 use, by you, 22 points last time the words, MCG. And they've won 17 of their last 20 at the Gabba. Obviously been really off this year, but as we predicted during the week with Callum, I think they're going to get back to that Gabba twice, surely at some point. Last week they put up 152. I'm talking about their offense and I'm, I'm still going over. I think Brisbane, gonna, Brisbane are going to put up a huge score. So they've got 152, 126, 114. And then a few weeks before that, 163 they put up. So I still think I'm going the over in this one. And the last six Lions matches have gone over the total points. So surely this one goes over. Nice one. Well, the big question, obviously, for this one is, are Brisbane back? Yeah. Yeah, they are. I think they are. And so is Will Ashcroft because he's been yes. named, which is very cool. I'm excited for Will Ashcroft. A, great hair. Great B, hair. Pretty good footballer. Yes. Uh, Darren Joyce comes in as well for Jack Payne and Shadow Brain. Ah, uh, But Brian, not Brian, <laughs> Brucey reveal. Brucey. I saw still Shadow in... Brain. I'm yeah. like, Brian, Bruce, I'll get there eventually. <laughs> Bruce, awesome. he revealed Casey's He's still spot. in. Thank That's God. Great. great for super coach, and I think he deserves it as well. He's been really good for the Lions. Uh, for the D's, Jakey Lever. Not bad. Taj Roy Woden. And Andy Moniz Wakefield makes his debut, which is pretty cool. What Christian a name. Salem goes out. Now, this was a bit of a query we had last mm. week about Salem with like a bit of a grabbed at the hammy or whatever. Uh, Kynan Brown, brutal one for yeah, super he, coaches. He was a bit stiff. Oh, not, not to go out because he wasn't very good, but. Stiff, didn't Made get his too much debut game coming off the off bench. the bench on the sub. It's, it's always brutal. Like, that. like Howes, 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 Howes yeah, yeah. Uh, goes out. So this is a really strange setup where Brisbane are flying, D's are struggling. Yeah, D's get Jake Lever back at least. That'll help the defense. Actually, that might change my over under. I'm still going over, I think. But I'm going to go the over. Yep, that's all right. But in terms of this, I mean, what the last six Lions games have gone over. Mm -hmm. Two top two, two four two top four defenses going at it. It's a strange setup, but I think between these two teams, we've kind of seen a few like belters, right? So as I mentioned, like that, the light, baby, when the lights go out. <laughs> that was chaos, ah. that game. It was Brisbane, a chaos Brisbane game. was smacking them before the lights went out and then Melbourne had the bit, bit of momentum out of the gates. Exactly. And so their last few games, 82 to 60. Yep. 105, 104. And 93 to 82. I don't think it can be that close this time. Though. Melbourne have looked horrible without Petrarca. Yeah. So Hipwood's playing pretty well, Stats Boy. Yeah, Hipwood, form of his life. 13 goals in his last three games, across his last three games. And then Big Gorney, he's literally a one-man uh, show at the moment. I feel bad for him. He's had 20-plus disposals in four of the last five games. I, he, he has the ability to get 20-plus disposals, but you shouldn't have to rely on him. Clary needs to lift. Viney needs to lift. But, yeah, not So Viney the was the sort of uh, pick that I had in, like, the – Without Petrarca. Yeah. I yeah. snagged him in Supercoach week. Draft. Oh, nice. Uh, but he's had like a pretty up and down season. But like last yeah. year, super consistent, super awesome. Uh, this is a really big, tough ask, I think, for uh, Melbourne going yeah. up there. I'm going to take Brisbane by 63. 63. I, I think they run over the top of them. Honestly, don't mind that pick. I'm going Brisbane by 50. I think that line is my lock of the weekend. We haven't been doing locks of the weekend, but if I had to make one, minus 30 and a half is way too small. Basically Melbourne been by five goals. Melbourne should have lost last week as well against North, uh, being a North fan. I wish we got over the line, but... So the Roos kicked the last six goals yeah, unanswered, didn't they? Yeah. Second halves lately, they look out of gas. Clayton Oliver just looks so tired. Oh, he needs to have a preseason. It's half, it's, what is it, three quarters of the way through the season, like you said during the week. I don't know. Lots of excuses for Melbourne. They're going to get smashed here in yeah, Brisbane. I feel like you've had enough time to build up your yeah, tank. Sure. I Saturday. Oh. Your beloved North Melbourne taking on the Bulldogs. The Western Bulldogs are 36 and a half point favorites. It feels like the dogs are playing pretty well. We understand yep. this. Like they've had a pretty good run. Uh, the trickiest part is, I think, is trying to figure out whether or not the dogs can continue to be good. <laughs> At football. That is the big question. 149 <laughs> up against uh, Frio. They put up 71 against Brisbane and got smoked. I don't know. So they put up 149 against the league's best defense at the time. It's 
It's crazy. How did the hell did they do that? So th- six goal favorites are the dogs. The over under is 182, which is pretty funny, but that's because the dogs are firing on offense last week at least, well, two weeks ago, yeah, prior to their bye. Yeah. And the Roos have been putting up a couple of scores here and there, yeah. not last week because that was just a horror game. Well, where the Roos are also the worst defense in the league by, I think it's two goals, nice. like by a long shot. So, yeah, it's going to so be a big score. You got the 17th best offense and the 18th best defense. Yeah. Great job, Stats. Yeah, no good. No good at all from the Roos. <laughs> all right, give us some stats quick. Uh, North, though, decent month or month and a little bit. Uh, covered the line in four of the last five games. Probably should have beaten Collingwood. Could have gotten a lot closer or beaten Melbourne, but haven't beaten the Bulldogs since 2019. That 2019 stat just keeps haunting me every single Thursday night. I think every team that North have played, haven't beat them since 2019, haven't beat them since 2019. That's got to change eventually, but probably not this week. The last six Dogs matches have gone over the total points. So even though that's really big, I think it's going to be a very free, free flowing game. Dogs, we love saying that they're just the uh, marker. What are they? The line of demarcation. Win, loss, win, loss, win. Their last five. Classic Dogs. If, the, if they got to keep up this trend, that means they're going to lose this one, but I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, because they do bring back Aaron Norton. Yes. Oscar Baker. Or those Darcy. Are, well, even Baker's okay, but Darcy and Norton are huge ins. Echoes Buku Kamas, Caleb Daniel, and Anthony Scott. Uh, in for the ruse comes Callan Dawson in place of the Warlord. How do you plays his 100th game? Yes. Isn't that nice? What a ledge. Very cool. Uh, the big question is quite literally, are the dogs able to win two in a row? That's like literally the biggest thing that you can just keep asking. They haven't done it for like six or seven weeks, yeah. Oh, yeah, just do it. Yeah. Can you? They're Uh, like, oh, we could. We're playing the Ruse. I think they're lucky that they're playing the Ruse. If they were playing anyone but the Ruse or Richmond, you'd be like, oh, should I tip the dogs? If the dogs hadn't just smashed Frio last Mm. time out at Marvel two weeks ago, I'd probably go the Ruse. But I wouldn't be surprised if they lose this, just the way they're going at the moment. I think they just fall over the line. 11-point win to the dogs. Ooh. 11 point win. I think the dogs still by 29. I think Ruse will cover the line again. Yep. Bont, he uh, loves dominating when the dogs are favorites. 25 plus and two goals the last t- five times they've been favorites. Phillips has been doing a really good job tagging. He tagged uh, Dacos, kept him out of the game, kept Oliver out of the game. But Phillips is 12 centimeters smaller than Bont. So Bont's going to have a field day, even if Phillips tries to tag. So Bont came off the field at training this week, right? Looking a little bit yeah. proppy. Proppy was the word. Back spasm. They've something. named him at full forward. Oh. I don't mind that, though. Next to Jamara, Cody Waitman. That is a Norton, tall forward line. Riley West, Jack. Actually, I'm going to make it 111 points. They're going to smash <laughs> well, it now. I've looked because at they've it. got all their, their tolls I'm back. I'm going to go 41. That's We're, actually – now oh. looking at it, you're like, that is terrifying. We've got so. Sheasel starting at center back on our one. That's a bit of a worry. Yeah, that is worrisome. He's like my height. Uh, no. Other stats there, stats boy. Oh, just another one. Aldo use hundredth. I absolutely love him. Probably the best North player the last month, and that's because he's been averaging a thirty-one disposals. Across what the would North you play. say to him if he was right here, right now? Oh, I'd give him a hug, and uh, then I'd yeah. make a banner for him to run through on the show. Do you think he'd want to be hugged? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We go. He way seems back. like a huggable yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah he does. He seems like a nice guy. Uh, <laughs> have you got mates who are just like, oh, I'm not a hug guy? Uh, yeah. A few yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. Are you a hugger? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Right, yeah, nice. Why not? I'm a big hug. Yeah. Man. Well, I can tell. I love a good hug. Yeah. Big bear hug. I'm just like, come here. Yeah. <laughs> Get Why around not? him. Why not? I feel like I would be part. as well. It's nice. a good tackler. So maybe is that does that relate to hugging? I don't know if that <laughs> translates, but maybe, maybe. Look, look, as I always like James say, Rowbottom leads the tackles. Is he is he a good hugger? As I always say, when the kid is doing something crazy, the human body craves contact. <laughs> Seriously, the baby's yep. just like, I'm going to tackle the big one. Yeah, why not? <laughs> He's just like, blah, blah. <laughs> Human body craves contact. It's all good. He'll be playing for the Blues one day. All right, your pick, Stats Boy? Uh, yeah, dogs by 29. Right. Are you changing yours? 41. 41. I've it's gone up 11 by to five goals. You've gone up by 30 points. <laughs> I went up by five goals just by looking at their lineup going, Honestly, wait a minute, Norton's back. Okay. Fair enough. All right, Sydney, Frio. This is a big game at the SCG Friday afternoon, 4.35. 27 half point favorites are the Swans. The over-under is 172.5, which to me actually – says a lot about Sydney and their favoritism there because Freo have been really good defensively. We know that this year, grind them into the dust kind of vibe. They're the second best defense in the league. The 172.5 is more about, I reckon, the Swans at the SCG just going, yeah, we're yes, just going to do a bit of a shootout. A bit, yeah. I'm leaning towards the under though because you've got the, obviously Sydney are first and first in offense and defense, but Freo, other than that little blip they had against the Dogs, are really good at clamp, uh, pulling out the clamps. So I'm, I'm going under. So when these teams played six weeks ago, yes. start of May, 39 to 87. <laughs> but before that, 76 to 105. Mm. 86 to 103. Crazy vibe. Well, Frio, yeah, that 86 to 103 was the last SEG meeting and Frio actually won it, which really surprised me. But Swans so, have won for the last five meetings. 
So, give us some stats, Tats, man. Yeah, there was one. Uh, Sid- <laughs> that was one. <laughs> that was one. Uh, I said stats. Yeah, uh, stats uh, oh, we got another one? I got another one. Uh, Sydney's average winning margin this year is 37 points. So, that's why that I think that line could be a little bit more than the 27 and a half. And their last five matches have gone over the total points. I think that Freo will, will go under, though. We'll help this go under. Hang on. So, I said 430. This is 145. Oh, I might have put in the wrong time there. I feel like you may have. <laughs> is it 145? Oh. There and now I'm confused. Is this Saturday or Sunday? You're killing me. This is on Saturday. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure. I'm all upside down. 145 right, right, right. of the SC. Yes, 145 on Saturday. Straight, same time as the North Bulldogs. Because game. why go. wouldn't we have Thursday night footy when we can have two games on at the exact same time? That just seems much yeah, right. smarter. That is weird. And then two all the games North, on Saturday night. North Bulldogs fans would, would still probably want to watch Sydney. This is the way they're playing at the moment. Just shocking. What yeah. are they doing? Uh, either way. We still have the ins and outs for this game. Yes. We have the Swans unchanged. Why would you change the greatest team in the last 150 <laughs> years of Aussie rules footy? Exactly. Freo, Josh Draper comes in for Alex Pierce. Brandon Walker in for the dropped Carl That is stiff. Warner. Warner, a lot of, I, I'm glad I didn't bring him in in Supercoat. He was really good two weeks ago. Pretty yes. average last week, but that's a bit stiff, I think. The big question is, will Sydney ever lose again? <laughs> ever. Ever. How many flags do they win in a row? Just... 22. 22, 22 flags. How old is Chad Warner until he retires? <laughs> he's going to retire when he's 15. 45. Let's go. Yeah. He's going to have a going to have a 22 year career. Uh, I don't think they'll yeah. I don't think they'll lose again this year. All right, good. No. Why not? I'm glad we solved that. Yeah. Uh, their average winning <laughs> margin ever. though, like that's the coolest part. I like like that Sydney one. or Australian, I like. There, it's always a weird one when you talk about average winning margins, but it's at 30. Like if you're beating this far into the season. When it's you're 13 yeah. one and you're just kicking their heads in of yeah. every team, winning your average winning margin is by 30, six so. goals. Yeah. That's insane. It, so. Anything above 30 is just a smashing anyway. So yeah. their last five, they smashed Carlton, they smashed the Dogs, they smashed Geelong, they smashed Adelaide, yeah. they smashed the Giants. Like they're just smashing teams. So Too good. it's really hard, even though I don't mind Frio as like a bit of a sneaky pick just because they've been kind of handy. But there are losing Alex road, but Pierce. Yeah, Alex Pierce is a huge a tough one. Uh, Frio, as mentioned, did win the last meeting at the SCG by 17. Mm-hmm. But I'm just going to stay with Sydney by six goals. That's their average. Let's just stay average. <laughs> six goals? I don't mind that. I don't mind that. I'm going to go them just under the – sorry, just over the line. So 28 points I'm going Sydney by. Just think, yeah, at home. If this was at Optus Stadium, I think this could be really, really close because Frio have been a lot better there. But at the SCG, Grundy's dominant. Well, they they've smashed them at the Optus Stadium earlier this year, like literally sorry, six I weeks ago. Sorry, about that. that. But yeah, Sydney by twenty eight. I see G Grundy always fires up at home as well, so they're gonna. That's one of the things. So talking about this, uh, Wow Errol has like one of the biggest uh, super coach projections this week. Oh, okay. Grundy at the SCG. Grundy, yeah. yeah. Chad Chudley Warner loves a snag. Luke Jackson doesn't mind a couple of snags at the SCG. Yeah. He kicked three there last year in that win. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, like Caleb Strong, is that a little bit of a. Dip in productivity. Andy Brayshaw has been a little bit better. I chucked in They're, Will Hayward loves playing Freo, which is a bit of a weird one, but three plus goals last two times he's played nice. Freo, so he might fire up again. And Sarong averages 33 against the Swans. Last two seasons, yes. Nice. Yeah. He's had like, yeah, four weeks though under 30. So. Yeah. Bit, bit off to his stands, but a few of the other mids have, have lifted, so he's, he's going all right still. Good job. So we're both going to Sydney. No yes. surprises there. They're no. the best team in the history of the age. <laughs> Gold Coast versus Collingwood. This game is awesome. Somehow... The Magpies on the road, yeah, above the twenty eighth parallel, are two and a half point favourites over the Gold Coast Suns. What are we doing that, here? That's just not correct. It that doesn't make any can't sense. Be right. You'll you're, be you'll load up and change the line anyway. Hundred <laughs> percent. I'm going to change the line by myself. Uh, awesome game. Can't wait for this. Four thirty five on Saturday yep. afternoon. Sell out at, at, at People's people. First. Yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, I also love that Gold Coast haven't won away from home. They're back at home. Oh, and seven. Yep. Playing an interesting Collingwood team. The over-under is 165 and a half. How do we feel about this one, Stats, man? Uh, they're very average on both, what is it, offense and defense. I'm leaning towards the over just because the Suns average 50 more points at home. They are gonna. They usually get about 100 to 110 points, I think. It was 107 points a game at home. 107 to 57, yeah. I yeah, think. Yeah, that's what it was. Our way, right? So, so, and Pies haven't been very good on defense. They've, they're the 10th best defense. When, the, when they've been winning the last couple of years, you'd be like, Darcy Moore's on fire, but they just haven't been. So... I'll be leaning towards the over on this one because, yeah, sun's fire up at home. Good one. Uh, the ins and outs. Ben King, that's a big in. Nick Holman as well, very handy. Oh, yes. In for Jake Rogers, dropped. Oh, man, super coach is copping a battering this week. Uh, Brandon Ellis is out injured as well. In for the pies. Here we go. Oleg Markov, Scott Pendlebury. 
Brody Majacek, Jordan Degoe, and Joey Richards. Oh, Majacek's back as well. Richards? Ah, oh, Richards, did it. you keep him for Supercoach Stats Boy? No, what are you doing? No, I definitely didn't. Did you? Outgo- no, I didn't. Oh. Uh, Charlie Dean's been dropped. Finn McRae's been dropped. Lockie Schultz, Gastro, Reef McGuinness dropped, and Tujiath, TJ, omitted. That is some huge, they are some huge ins. Pendles, Majacek, Degoe. They're that's three, they're best, like, they're top pretty, 10 players. So that's, good. that's really good. The big question here is, is this a Pies home game? It will sound like it. Last time they actually played there at Pebbles First, they won by 78 points, and that was to do with the whole crowd was Collingwood. You wouldn't have even realized it was a Gold Coast game. Felt bad for the Suns fans just getting mauled by uh, people with no teeth and flags in their face and things like that. That's going to happen again today, and it's going to feel like a home game for the Pies. Look out. He's going to gum you to death. <laughs> uh, this is above the 28th parallel, though. Surely. So just... just- Ergo, the Gold Coast Suns will win. Yeah. I don't that's even just, think we are. That's just rocket science. Yeah. Not they, surgery. They don't lose above that parallel. So they don't. I'm going Gold Coast by 10. I'm going Gold Coast by four. <laughs> yeah. I think this is a great, great game. Hmm. I think there's a really fun setup here where you have the Pies midfield. They get Pendles back. They get to go back. back, yeah. Really fun, exciting, good ball users. This I think is that's the kind why of the Pies would be favorites because my check back in that side, they just they haven't had a tall forward for about five weeks. So yep. they'll be, yeah, they'll be happy with that. Uh, ben Long. Some stats here. Yeah, stats two plus goals in his last three Gold Coast home games. You could say that about every Gold Coast player. Noah Anderson plays better at home. Jack Lukosius plays better at home. The only one that's been really consistent is Ben King up forward, but he's always been King goals. Uh, Lipinski as well averages 24 touches last few years against Gold Coast. Bit of a random one, but he averages more than any other team he faces. So loves playing the Gold Coast. This is going to be a great game. I'm going to go to the Suns, as I mentioned, by four. I think this should be an absolute back and forth arm wrestle. Yeah, I agree. I'm fascinated to see how the Gold Coast defense sort of stands up mm. like we've seen them especially obviously at home just put the clamps on teams they've and then a, let the midfield run rampant yeah i think they've got a good team they got, bodie ulan's having a really good year sam collins is always pretty solid they've got a few underrated guys i think in their back line. and the yeah. pies like we've talked about this time and time again even with dacos sort of you know hitting a nice patch of form their defensive midfield now has always been sort of in question yeah and if you give gold coast suns an inch they'll take a mile as the saying goes or they'll Absolutely. take a 28th parallel perhaps Oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> There's dark in, music in the background. And take an entire part of latitude. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> uh, but I think Gold Coast, like this, we talk about big calls, etc. Like this is a landmark game for the Suns, doesn't it, it feel like? Because if they win it, they're really sort of like. Gets the big team. Gre- greases the skids to actually make the finals at some yeah. point. Eight and seven. This I could think decide they'd be. it. Lose this and you're like, ah, oh, still can't confidence. do it. This is the do? time of year that they lose these type of games and then they got they lose confidence and then they lose Classic three in a row. Suns, yeah. So I yeah, being a neutral, I would love to see the Suns in the final. So I hope Let's they win this one. Sorry, Collingwood fans. Not yeah, sorry. We've already seen you win a flag. Geelong Essendon Saturday Saturday night. <laughs> this is just like tunes time with Jim. <laughs> yeah. Just, a lot of songs just lost today. your marbles from uh from too many live streams. I've just streams. been talking. I've just run out of oxygen. My brain's just flying. You're just you're gonna sing more than talking at the moment. There are some big ins and outs for this game there as is. well, but the Essendon Bomb Rays are one and a half point favourites at the MCG on Saturday night at 7.30. The over-under is 167 and a half. The Bombers are ahead of the Cats on the ladder. The yes. Cats have gone one and six in their last seven after starting seven and oh. This is getting worrisome, Stats Boy. Yeah, I'd be worried if I was the Cats. The main one for the Cats is that they're 15th ranked in the defensive column. That is that is a huge worry. Tom Stewart, again, we've said it before. He's been he might get tagged by Guelphy, people are saying. Guelphy's a lot smaller, but he's been just been, I don't know, if he's pinching people like Matt Crowley used to do or things like that. But yeah, I'm worried about the Matt cats Crowley? defense. Ryan Crowley? Who did I say? Matt Crowley. Matt Crowley. Yeah. Oh, I meant to say Ryan Crowley. Yeah. Ryan Crowley. Creepy, creepy Crowley. Yep. Uh yeah. So that's the thing I'm worried about. Their defense has been horrible. Don's, what are the, what's their offense? Eighth offense, so that's not too bad at 86 a game. Yeah, they've just just been so often. Very unlike Geelong, because they're usually so lo- they're really good at lockdown and defending. Ins and outs for this are interesting as well, right? As mentioned, Lawson mm. Humphrey comes in for Who? the comes in for oh, the Cats, making his debut. Ooh. Shannon Neal comes in, presumably for Tomahawk. Yes, Mitch Nevitt in as well. Mm. Oh, Ollie Henry! Out Henry's goes player. Ollie Henry with and an injury. Washington Hawk. Mullen and Tomahawk. Yeah, that's brutal because Henry and Hawk. I know Hawkins hasn't been going too well, but he still is a big guy. You know what this says to me. Big Shannon Neal guy. Jezza time. Oh, Jezza. Sorry, yes. Uh, Told the Golds, Gene. I love Toddley. <laughs> uh, Jay Gre- Grady Gresham and uh, Jai Menzi and Nate Caddy dropped. So 
Menzi, I reckon, is a bit stiff. Oh, Caddy, Caddy actually good. did really well as well, but Goldie, just the experience. Up against a Cats team that's like, oh, Blixavs is our ruck, sure. They put, I can't believe they still put Sam DeConing in there last week. I reckon that was trying to rattle Tom. It definitely did didn't work. work. Don't, don't put him in the ruck ever again. Uh, give us some stats, stats man. Yeah, sure. Uh, Essendon have won their last 13 matches as favourite, uh, which a lot of people say Essendon are downhill skis, but when they're favourite, they do win. So this is, even though this is only slight favouritism, Geelong have won the last six meetings though in this uh, this matchup, but have failed to cover the line in their last 10 matches Jeez. after a loss. So they just, I don't know, when they lose, their heads are down the next week as well. So hopefully Geelong can fire up in this one. That's what That's all I'm hoping for because I think, Geelong still have the team that yep. can that can make finals, but they're just not playing like it at all. Tricky one. Essendon yeah. nine. Essendon a nine four and one. Yep. Geelong are eight and six. And I mean, the big question for this one is: will, Can Jezza fire Sands Tomahawk? He's been so inconsistent this year, Jezza. He has these flashes where he's about to take over the game. Look at him go! Oh, how did he miss that? Yeah, kind of vibes. This could be the game. I don't know if it will be. I'm going to change my pick with some of those outs. I'm going to go Essendon by 15. Oh, really? Completely switched around. The big question, obviously, is will Jezza fire uh, Sands Tomahawk? I think he'll try. I don't mind this Essendon defense at times, though. I think they should even try Jezza or Tom Stewart in the in the midfield a little bit. Just to, There needs to be some firepower in there. There's a big body. There's a lot of guys in there just getting 23 or less touches. With Ridley back, mm. Nick Martin, Laverty, Mason Redmond, big Ben Mackay out there as well. You're like talking yourself just, into Essendon? Now, I've yeah. just sort of talked myself into okay. Essendon, who are the best team in the AFL, non-Sydney division, obviously. So, <laughs> Non-Sydney division. We didn't uh, actually talk about this being the country game. So this is my point. You the country to... game. <laughs> who doesn't love the country game, which is in the city at 7.30 on Saturday night, negating the fact that anyone from the country can't get a train home. So that... don't have a few tins, too bad. Can't go to this game because you can't drive home. I understand why it's at the G, but don't call it the country game. Have it. <laughs> Maybe have – even in Geelong, they could have had it in Geelong. You know what you could have just done? Just had it at 2 o'clock on, at, on yeah. a Saturday afternoon at the Jets. They usually have PM. this as the uh, Arvo game on a Sunday, Arvo, which I was surprised they don't do that. But you're right. Your country people – Nothing screams country game more <laughs> like playing in the city at night Yeah, where no one from the country no, you can got get a good home point. before midnight. you got a very good point. Amazing work <laughs> by the Brains Trust there. Very good point. All right. I'm taking Essendon by 15 here, Stats Boy. I'm going to go Geelong by three. I am a – I'm really worried now with those outs because I think I'm not that fussed about Tom Mahawk. He's been a bit off, but Ollie Henry, I thought, could have a really good game. This is a kitchen sink game it is. for the Cats. I think Geelong have to play attacking. It's a Scott Bowl as well. Yeah, Scott Bowl. I love yeah, we Scott Bowl. About that. Yeah, yeah. Who's I, the better coach? <laughs> Definitely not Brad. Do you reckon no, their mum no, is just like. That. When Chris Scott got his Brad, flag. Brad, just get out of here. With <laughs> when Chris Scott got his first flag, he just inherited the, one of the best like teams ever. Sure. The second one, though, is different because he has one too. Brad Scott also had to get like, you know. Brad Scott had some crap. Grandfathered into <laughs> basically being given like a job with the fa yeah. family gig, essentially running the, uh, you know, what the rules for the AFL and ugh, yeah. gross. But no, definitely Chris Scott's the better coach. I just wanted to lengthen that a little bit more <laughs> as an North fan. Again on Saturday night. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Sad. I still couldn't get tickets to Cold Chisel. I'm still angry about this. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> someone, on here, someone on here might have one. Anybody out there, <laughs> just let you make Jim know. Yeah. Adelaide GWS at the Adelaide Oval. The GWS Giants on the road against a reeling, reeling Crows who are 4 9 and 1. Talk about Tex Walker. Has he played his last game? Last game. Oh. oh, I don't know. He's. Been named. Yeah, so I was going to say, he's playing on the weekend, isn't he? Uh, the over is 160.5, which just sort of screams about Adelaide's uh, lack of firepower of late. Yes. And, and GWS. GWS as well. Same really sort of bad offense lately. The Giants' favorites on the road. Uh, the Crows' offense, 12th. That is just an absolute be kick in the guts. Way How is this that. Crows' offense 12th? Well, stats you, yeah, you got, you got Walker. Obviously, Walker's older, but Fogarty, Rankin. Ross Rosalli, Keys usually can pop up for a couple of goals. Even Lockie Scholl's been getting goals. But their big guys just haven't been consistent. Rosalli and Fogarty just need to be a bit more consistent. Two goals a game, lads. Surely so, it's not that hard. This is 7 p.m. on Saturday. Oh. The other one's at 7.30. So anyhow, this is uh, we've actually gotten turned around. Nice. Uh, GWS beat the Crows 71-57 last time out. They beat them 106-90 the yes. time before that, 113-54. GWS have actually four straight. Yeah, well, they've won like four, uh, the last four, and three of those matches were at Adelaide Oval. Oh, hello. So GWS at Adelaide Oval are just powerhouse. Apparently, yeah. In comes Big Tex Walker, Riley O'Brien. Jeez, finally, uh, Elliot Himmelberg as well. Out goes Bolazzi. Bolace. 
Oh, he's been in and out. Harry Schoenberg, Kieran Strawny. Oh, Strawny. Our, tough one. Yeah. Not really. He was. Not <laughs> no, he wasn't great. Uh, GW, GWS bring in Harry Perriman like that. Yeah. Stephen Coniglio's back. Watch out. Uh, is that coming? Is he coming or going? We don't Those know. Those three ins are, are massive. Out goes Peatling, Angwin, and O'Halloran. Uh, I'm now changing my pick, having seen those ins and outs. I'm going oh. GWS by six. Boo. Oh, no, because, uh, that is fair. a tough one. Big question is, does Nick survive the weekend <laughs> if this is a belting? Oh, it's very rare in AFL that you get you get uh, kicked out mid-season. I well, think it's not if, really mid-season for the Crows if they lose this. The season's three. done. I think he could go at the end of the season, but yeah, not after this week. They would be 4-10-1 and one if they lose this, Stats Boy. Also, Jet AWS just don't have enough firepower to make this like a smashing. I but, think it will be close either way. But even if they lose, it's still going to be a bad look on uh, Adelaide at home. So Isaac coming. Uh, is massive. Canelio is massive. Perriman's very good handy player. as well. Mm-hmm. I really like the Giants in this. Mm. They're not afraid of Adelaide Oval. Uh, let's go. Uh, you got some stats? Yeah, a few player ones. Toby Green's kicked three-plus goals in his last three matches uh, against Adelaide. So Ooh. he's been very off this year, Toby. That's part of the reason I think they're going back because you could just rely on him to get 20 and three goals every week last year. What's the explanation for that? Oh. New kid. New kid. But he hasn't got the dad the dad powers. No. <laughs> just goes either way. Paddy Cripps got him? Yeah. Toby Green didn't. Toby Green going to get him. Uh, Laird as well, 25-plus in seven of his last eight games. He has all the stats. I just need him to have more impact on the game. Same as Dawson. Yeah. Same as uh, who else? Saligo has been really good. He's having impact on the game, but I don't think Laird is at the moment. I reckon Adelaide put up a fight. Yep, I agree. Give me GWS by a goal, though, and I think this is just one of those, oh, poor Adelaide. It is a crazy fascinating game, though, because you've got two teams who, I mean, GWS have been far from convincing, I feel like, most of this season. The... Since the lost, start, yeah. Lost to the Sydney like last week. Oh. Yeah, you're going to lose to Sydney. Oh, but we put up a fight late, but they were getting smashed. That like, Sydney what are we doing? just put the uh, foot off the gas. They beat the power prior to that yeah. in a weird game. They lost to the Hawks. It's just been very, very, very strange. I think the Giants get this done, though. I think Coniglio is a big one. Let's do it. Yeah. Go Giants. Yeah, it's I'll, a big, big sound. I like the uh, ins as well. GWS by two goals for me. I did have a big yellow on NBA Australia, though, about uh, how the Cat Empire wrote big, big sound. Well, one of the dudes from Cat Empire... And I didn't it's just know like, that. Yeah. I just yelled more and more about how bad the Cat Empire were. But that guy wrote a really but good that song. That dude wrote an awesome song. GWS, great song. Good on you, Harry. <laughs> Sunday, St Kilda take on the Port Adelaide Power. Never dare us a boom, 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 We hate you, Ken. Boom, 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 boom. We hate you, Ken. His new scarves got to ring Ken out. Tough one. Sad, sad for Ken. Over at Marvel Stadium. The Saints are somehow two and a half point favorites against oh, the power. That shows how bad the power are going. How <laughs> is that possible, Stats Boy? The Saints are five me. and nine and 14th. The power I'll are still check. in the eight at eight and six. I'll double check, but, but they I'm have lost sure their one. last three games. They have looked horrendous, have the Port Adelaide. Yeah, they are. Power. They are still two and a half point favorites. That That's is chaos. That is crazy. Uh, the over under is 160. And this is so, this is the 110 p.m. game at Marvel on Sunday. Stats Boy, mm. give us some stats on the. Offense and defense here. Yeah, so you got Saints always down the bottom in offense, especially when you're coached by Ross Lyon. So they're 15th. Offensive port is a little bit better in ninth. Then the defense, both, uh, sorry, the Saints defense, always strong. Fifth, power 13th. So it depends if you think the the power can get through the Saints uh, defense because everyone that comes to Marvel against the Saints, you saw we saw the Suns the other week. They only scored 49 points. Oh, yeah. So that's why that over, I'm still leaning towards the under because just Ross Lyon loves making this really 100%. a horrible game. Port as well, haven't been putting up big scores above. 70 in the, they've been in the 70s the last couple of weeks so yeah i'll be leaning towards the under because of those stats oh that's one uh port don't mind the old marvel as well they right? love it there yeah I, I forgot to say that one port have won uh 13 of their last 14 against the saints but a marvel specialist nine and one in their last 10 Not at marvel bad. i don't know i don't know why maybe they should play their home games at marvel i feel like the one of the ones they lost might have been carlton at some point it anyway. was it was uh it was the end of last year when you're on your crazy run Sounds started right. the start of your crazy run uh the other week, I think they've beaten them the last five straight too. So uh, the big question here is, we asked this about Matthew Nix. Does Ken survive the weekend if they get belted? Poor. It's a bit tough on the road, but at the same time, you can just leave him here. Leave him here. Just go, oh, yeah. Come on our show. Ken, we're, uh, oh, yeah, we're on like the two, I don't know, the 645 flight. And he's like, that doesn't sound right. Yeah, where's everyone gone? <laughs> he's like, where is everybody? He's like, <laughs> oh, we'll meet you at the pub. He's like, I'm here. Yeah. And everyone's yeah. like, don't respond. That's his palmer. Um, <laughs> anyway, can the Saints score? Basically, is what this is. Can shower po- power show some heart? That's all this is. I like- think power, the power might lift. You got Butters. Uh, I saw in an article just 
saying, I love Kenny. I love, I love Ken. We, we got to go around Ken. We got to do this for Ken. Same as Willem Drew just said that. I think a lot of their leaders are going to be like, we need to get uh, the media and the fans off Ken's back. So that's why yeah, I'm leaning towards Port. I, th- I think they can because they've, they've got enough talent at Port. I'm going to go Port as well. Yeah. Uh, you got some stats though? Uh, yeah, a few other ones. What is this? Uh, I said unders. Nine of the last 25 Saints games have gone under. If you, if you don't want to watch one of the games on the weekend, usually Saints is a pretty good bet. Uh, Sinclair as well. He's been really good the last month. Three of the last four weeks, he's had 30 plus, similar to his Australian best from a couple of seasons ago. Then George Yardis, Charlie Dixon's obviously out. He stepped up three plus goals in his last three matches. Oh, that's one. In for the Saints, Naziah Wangani Miller. Oh, back. Thank Ryan God. Ryan Burns, Jimmy Webster, Cooper Sharman. These are the extended benches. Zane Cordy's been dropped already. Uh, in for the power, Travis Boak, Willie Rioli, Ooh. Will Lorenz, uh, Dylan Williams, Lockie Jones, Don Davis, and Danny. Out goes Radagalia. Injured. injured. Ooh. Jace Burgoyne, injured. Jed McEntee. In, uh, dropped as well. Will Lorenz makes his debut. Awesome. I still like the power. I'm going to go the power by 17, just under three goals. I think just this is an ugly, It'll be early, ugly yeah. early Arvo Sunday game, right? Yeah. I'm going Port Adelaide by five just Ooh, because close. they haven't shown much. And yeah, St. Kilda aren't too bad at, at Marvel. So it's going to be an ugly game. Both under, both score under 60 points. I reckon. <laughs> Not going to be fun. A rivalry renewed. Now the Carlton are good and Richmond are bad. <laughs> yeah. It's the Tigers versus the Blues of the MCG 320 on Sunday Arvo. Uh, this should be a very, very interesting test of Carlton's metal, I believe. They're 40 and a half point favourite stats, boy. The they over-under is them. 170.5. Now you say they should smack them. This is also <laughs> like just one of those uh, rivalries where like We've seen Richmond time and time again this season. They lift, yeah. Just go, you want to count us out? Check this out. Yeah. Whapang! And you're like, oh, come on, man. They haven't Carlton, done that for a while. Carlton though. did beat them at the start of the season, 86-81, in just like one of those classic, Five points. annoying, heartbreaking, really close, just watch yeah. Jim's blood pressure sky <laughs> like through the roof. They tied last year. We did a live stream. No. No, no we, we didn't, didn't live, live that, one, that one, but that would have been a good one. 58-58. Yeah. Tigers obviously... Famously, they've had the wood over the Blues for a pretty chunk, like ten years, of time. pretty much. Yeah, Blues did beat them back in twenty twenty two as well. But I mean, this is a Carlton offense that's been firing the last few weeks. Yeah. Uh, even to the point where you're like, they weren't. They played the best they've all played all season against the Cats last last week. Yep. Uh, just so put up one hundred four quarter effort. Yep. Put up one hundred thirty eight on the Cats. You're like, that's good. They put up ninety six on the Bomb Rays. 107 on the power, 102 on Gold Coast prior to that. The Tigers' defense at the G, it'll be a very different sort of beast, I think. But I think they'll still be a little bit too good just because the yeah. Tigers' defense this year is second worst second in worst. the AFL. And then so, the worst offense. Yep. So they're not going to keep – this is why I'm a bit hesitant on the over-under. I think I'm still going over because Blues could put up 120 themselves. But yeah, when you've got the yeah, worst offense in the comp, that's going to be tough. For me, I'd probably still go Richmond of the line, the 40 and a half, really? just because I think this could oh. be like 90 to 68 or something and just like a bit of a grubby, annoying sort of game. Mm. So give us some stats. stats yeah, man. well, the, the one thing about the line, I think why it is 40 and a half, is the Tigers have lost four of their last five MCG games Ooh. by 40 plus. You go back a couple of years ago, you go, they're not losing at the G, but now they just can't win there. Uh, Charlie Kerno, he loves playing against the bottom sides. I don't think he's a downhill scare, but he just... He just gets a lot more of the ball when you're playing the bottom four. He's he good five against the Cats. Exactly. Last week. So he's yeah, he's all good. Kerno kicked four plus in the last five games against teams in the bottom four. And then Daniel Rioli, we talked about him midweek that a lot of teams would like him twenty plus in his last eight games. It is weird because like you look at that Richmond backline of Broad, Bolter, Vloston, Rioli, still solid. Yeah. Tom Brown, like that's it gets pretty thin after that though. Just right? not one on one. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, but Hopper comes back. Jacob Blight, Sam Banks, Caleb Smith. Yep. Out goes Tom Lynch. I called it on the show. I said that he's just coming in because it's Dusty's 300th. He just, that's he the only looks, reason. Talk about proper. He, he was horrible. Uh, Jacob Blight makes his debut, which is very cool. Keep an eye on him for Supercoach as well. In for the Blues on the extended bench. Corey Durden, unfortunately, has been dropped, but Adam Chera, Caleb Ooh, Muchback, oh. Jesse Motlop, my good friend, and Pido. <laughs> that's some big ins. Pido was actually a call that I made this week on the Supercoach show, basically going, do you bring back Pitto for this one week to go, you go against big boy Nank? Yeah. We'll, we'll let He's a bit stronger than uh, Tom DeConing. We'll yeah. give Tom DeConing like a bit of a rotation. We'll bring Pitto back. We'll go with the two rucks up against big Nank. You called it. Just see how it goes. Yeah. It's exactly what's happened. I'm not saying that I'm Nostradamus, Nostradamus. 
<laughs> yeah, that, uh, that counts. But Chera being back, look, this is Chera's one huge. of the ones where it's like, yes, bring him back. Mm-hmm. Get some wind under his sails and away he goes. Interesting game. It's a fascinating uh, setup. Nank and Zach Williams, 150th, it just says here as well. Very nice. Very cool. Big question. Big rivalry game. So the Tigers, will they make it a game, right? This is the thing. Uh, Can they? No. Will they? No. Okay. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Sorry, Richmond fans. You uh, just, uh, you're, cooked. you're cooked. I didn't say it. Uh, any other stats there, stats man, or you got them all? Uh, no, I think I've gone through them all. All right. Good enough. Let's do it. Carlton by 32. I'm going Carlton by 45. They're going to do this so easily. And then if, yeah. if nothing else, I kind of feel like if Carlton kick away a little bit, they would 100% sort of just give up the goose a little bit later yeah, and just maybe like, yeah. the Tigers cover that. So. I sort of want Richmond to get close, though, because that would be very funny. <sighs> I keep, We're getting a few angry I, texts To be honest, here. I just want to see the Blues just kill a team. Yeah. And like, last week was awesome. So. I think it could be 100-plus if all things click for the Blues. Well, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to happen. <laughs> <be>. Finally! <clears throat> Wait, is this final? Yes, West Coast Hawthorne. We're, a we're bird ball. ball. The bird ball. I love this. So this is a – what time is this one, Stats Boy? Uh, 4.40. 440 I don't know what, what's PM. with my times today. He's also got it written down in the MCG. So <laughs> out there, out west, up the stadium, Bird Bowl, yes. the Eagles versus the Hawks. Fascinating setup because the Hawks have been good. Very good. So have the Eagles. Have they? At home. At home, yeah, three and five. What are the Eagles, though? Play the drop. Din, 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 311. Yes. Love that. Let's go. Uh, look, the Eagles, last time we saw them was last week against the Bomb Rays, put up a pretty handy fight. Put a scare into them early yep. on the road at Marvel. We know they play Essendon tight. It's the Sheedy Bowl. Prior to that, Ruse went over there and beat them. Uh, was prior to that, lost to the Saints. Prior mm. to that, got belted by Adelaide. Prior to that, beat Melbourne. What the hell? <laughs> the Eagles are chaos. I love it. Uh, I actually really don't mind the Eagles in this one. Really? Jakey Waterman back next to, you know, the big um, Oscar Allen 2 plus. Yep. Like, it's pretty handy. So in comes Tim Kelly. In comes, fire it up. Whoa, Holly Reed, Bamble, whoa, Holly Reed, Bamble, 1.8 mil, Bamble. He's back. I love that. Andrew Gaff back. Harry Edwards back. Out goes Jack Petricelli. Oh. Uh, Hawks have managed Lukey Bruce, Harry Morrison in, Josh Ward, Finn McGuinness, Jai Sarong, Sarong. Yeah, Caleb's brother. He's a good player. Fascinating game. With Tim Kelly and Harley Reed back, it makes it even more fascinating with the bird bowl. The thing is the Hawks, can they win on the road? So this has been the Ooh. one little thing about the Hawks this season. Does Tassie count as the road? <laughs> well, so at the G, beat Richmond. Yep. At the G, beat the Giants. Beat Adelaide, I think that one was in Tassie. Uh, beat the Lions at Marvel, I believe that one was, wasn't yep. it? Yeah. Uh, Lost to Port Adelaide in that shocker at Adelaide Oval. Beat the Saints uh, at home. Lost to Sydney, but lost to the Gold Coast Suns earlier in the season as well. So on the road is a little bit more of a tricky one. Go all the way out west. We'll see what happens. So give us some stats, stats, man. Oh, the over-under is 163.5, which is also a pretty... I'd be going under, I think, because as you mentioned before, they've got some decent defenders... um... The Eagles. So what are they? Are they're 16th and 16th in offense defense, which is still a bit of a worry. But it's 16th and 13th offenses. So I'm I'm still going the under. Middle of last year, 142 to 26. Oh yeah, they won Not by great. 116 last time. The Not Hawks. Great. <laughs> I forgot about Not that. Great. Yeah, uh, Hawks, they've covered the line in the last seven matches. I think they've been one of the most consistent teams in the competition. There's not no other team that's been that consistent. You've got the Dogs are going up and down, Freo going up and down, Geelong, Port. Hawks, you just know what you're going to get from them. They're going to have a close game. West Coast, we mentioned it before. They're much better at home, three and five there. I just had a quick look. The Hawks all-time Optus Stadium, I just had it up a second ago. They haven't played there much, but three and five. So take of that what you will. But uh, yeah, I, I think, won't take much. Yeah, we're going to take much. It's, I was gonna, <laughs> this is three and five. I thought that stat might have a bit more uh, depth behind it before I read it out, but it didn't. <laughs> good job. Yeah, we go. That's some good stats by the stats man. <laughs> My favorite thing is like you're such a mediocre stats man. It's like I'm the stats guy. It's like here's a mediocre stat. No, actually, no. to be honest, my uh, most, good stats, rest yeah. of the stats are being good. Yeah. Maybe you should that actually just pretty, have your crap, mediocre though. stat of the week. Yeah, that was here's my, med- my mediocre <laughs> stat of the week. Hi guys. Oh, so three and five all time. <laughs> three and five. I just got nothing. Womp, from that. Womp, yeah. womp, I thought it was gonna womp. be more games. Stats than man. That. I thought it was gonna be more than eight games. I was like, oh, anyway, <laughs> that's just not my. That's not my best way. Can the Hawks win on the road is the big question. The Bird Bowl, I think with Harley Reid, with Tim Kelly back, oh. I'm taking the West Coast really? Eagles by 15. At home, you've got the J train next to Oscar Allen 2+. plus. 
I love You mentioned this. the J train. Those are, that can give some better stats for you. How about that? Three plus goals in seven of his last eight games. He also kicked three goals against the Hawks last time. Nice. So you think you might fire up? Yeah. Cripps has been good. Jamie yes. Cripps, Liam Ryan, very handy last, last week as well. Weeks. Liam yep. Duggan, very good last week. Tom Barras, yep. obviously, he's come out and said, oh, I want to be an eagle for life, even though I'm a man. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy McGovern that uh, joke got has been fantastic. <laughs> but Gaff being back, yo, next to Harley Reid. Let's bloody do it, Eagles. I'm on board. You're, you're going the Eagles. Fly, Eagles, fly. <laughs> we'll turn into Tom Barras, and away we go. <laughs> What's your pick there, Statsman? Uh, I've got on the uh, st- Statsman. That's just, I don't know. That's rattled me. Hawks <laughs> by 20 points. I think they're going to win the Bird Bowl. They've been really good. Three and four away from home isn't too bad. And I think they've just got a lot more depth than being really consistent lately. Nice one. That's all nine games. That's why it felt like a longer time. We had nine. Didn't even think about it. That's not we've done nine in a month and a bit. Yeah. Big call for the weekend ahead. Ooh. Uh, my big call is basically Matty Nix. They get belted. I have a line. Okay. 66 and a half points. If they lose by more than that. <laughs> Surely they're not losing by that much. But if they do. If they do. He's gone. Okay. Pack her up, boys. It is a fascinating setup for Adelaide at the moment, right? They had so... You were like, hey, top 14, Jim. Oh, top 14. It's a big call, but that didn't work, did it? Tex comes back. This might be the moment where you go, oh, yeah, tax, Tex might be time to might hang Might be done, up. yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised, especially if they get smashed the next couple of weeks. He, he, he won't want to play anyway. By the Giants, yeah, he won't I think play. it might be just one of those on your bike. But because yeah. there's so much talent on this Crows team mm. between Rochelle, Rankin, like as you mentioned, Fogarty, Ben Keys. How is this offense so bad? Jordan Dawson in the above middle. 90 points. You know yeah. my beloved Lockie, Scholl, Jake yes. Saligo, love them. But wow. So, so inconsistent. If they are not good this week and don't show something, I think, look, if it's a belting, we might see the end of Knicks as of this week. Half time, maybe. Lose this, he's gone to the end of the season. So okay. I really, 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 cool. really, really don't like we talked about bad coaches. And I don't I, a lot of my point for that was to be going, Ken Hinckley has been wildly successful over a very long yes. time. Yes. He hasn't won a flag. Been a bit he unlucky. hasn't made a grand final. No. That's tough. Matthew Nix has been in charge at Adelaide for like five years. Done nothing. With what to show he'll for be, it. He'll be gone, It yeah. is brutal. So yep. Nix is on his bike. Nice. Stats boy. Uh, ben King, he's going to feast five-plus goals against Collingwood. I don't rate Collingwood's defense at all. I think, where were they as I scroll up quickly? If I can find them. I can't find them. Oh, there we go. They are the 10th best defense. So that's really not to their standards. Darcy Moore's looked off. Suva kicked four in a row against him. Yep. And I think that uh, Ben King is second in the Coleman. He's going to catch up to Charlie in the Coleman, possibly. And kick five plus against the Pies. It's the Pies at home. They, no, yeah, why not? He is very handy at home. He's been really good. 38 goals this year. Just don't rate Collingwood's defense this year. They got a lot of ins, midfield ins, forward ins, but not back ins. So, yeah, don't rate it at all. Very good. Uh, what are we keeping an eye on this week? So the biggest storylines to sort of vaguely make sure that you're oh, kind of just like, oh, yeah, just yeah, keep just an just eye keep on. on. Just yeah. keep an eye on. Just keep an eye on Port Adelaide and Geelong. Just in general. Pretty Those much. two teams have been reeling, mm. reeling. So you're trying to keep an eye on the simple fact of whether or not they can show some hat and bounce back. So as I talked about, with those outs for the Cats, that's huge. That's massive. The country game. Oh, God, the what are they going to do? Played <laughs> in the city. But against the hated rivals of the Bombers, can they show a bit of something, something? Mm. Can Chris Scott take it to brother Brad? And the power, I mean, this is it. Like, this is put up or shut up time for the power. They have to actually so back So much pressure in. on their coach. It's the it's literally coming down to the players going, how much heart do we have? What mm. are we doing? Yep. Finn Layson is just an absolute flog of a bloke and he a is. flog of a player this season, and I want to see him step up and do something. Good call. Because the power, God, they've been horrible. Show us something. Yep. Simple as that. Keep an eye on it. Because if they keep spiraling, they could both miss the eight. Which is, yeah, that's crazy because they were flying at the start. Essendon against a good team. I just yeah, I just put him in, put this I, in there. No, I love yeah. this. Just like, against the side pushing for finals, they haven't beaten anyone. Sorry, one team in the top eleven. You got Geelong thereabouts pushing for finals. So just to see if they can just flex their muscles against a, a good team. So it's a fascinating setup again for Essendon. I'm going to say fascinating setup one more time. <laughs> yeah, it's how many times it's set up? They were pushed goal. by West Coast. Pushed by West Coast to the point where they were like, oh god, we're we going to lose this. I know. Well, twice this season pushed by West exactly. Coast. Exactly. Yeah. So they really need to just go. Hang on. Yeah, we can take care of Geelong. If they do so, they're legit, and away we go. 
Gold Coast and how they react to the Pies fans, Stats Boy. Love There's going to be a lot of loud Pies fans at uh, People's First. Oh, it's going to be chaos. So there'll be the Collingwood chant going around. If they can have a lead halfway through the fourth quarter and just shut down that Collingwood noise, then they can win. And I think the big one that I'm looking on Friday night for the Ds, A, are we seeing anything from the Ds? Or is if they don't give us yeah. anything, their season's cooked. They're done. Yeah. Like, you can just pack it up. I think no, it is done already, yeah. No Petrarca, no Ds, question mark. Uh, and if they don't show up against uh, Brisbane, which is a tough one at the best of times, at the Gabba, when they've sort of reasserted mm. themselves, watch out, this could be a bloodbath. Yep. The thing is, Brisbane's midfield mix, look, this is one of those things, right? It's really clicked. It's been really good. The offense has been fantastic. They bring Will Ashcroft back. It's one of those things, it's like addition, awesome, but we're all Lots clicking. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Is this suddenly too many mouths to feed? Because Ashcroft, he actually did pretty well when he was playing forward because he kicked a couple of goals last yep. year. So they but might start him forward. They'll perhaps? start him forward, I reckon. But, yeah, it's just a bit funny because their forward line's firing. You don't really want to mess with that too much. Named on the, uh, named on the bench, but okay. I think they'll be fine because they're that good and yeah. the Ds are in that much turmoil that yeah. they should be all right. But just keep an eye on it. I just want to know about this Brisbane vibe yeah. about can they get back to the Gabatois, of course. Should they just absolutely put Melbourne to the sword? But really, that midfield mix, does it alleviate some of the pressure on Neil and Dunkley to do everything? Yep. Zorko on halfback, et cetera. Ashcroft, a little bit extra skill here. I don't know. I'm very interested to see what happens. Nice. Excellent. Super coach tips, vibes, thoughts, stats, man. Let's go. What are you feeling? Oh, uh, everyone's getting Rosie this week. I'm still, oh, I don't know. I know he's very cheap. What is he? 410,000 I wrote down. Yep. Very, very cheap for a guy of his uh, caliber. But is his hamstring just going to randomly just give way in the next couple of weeks? Jeez. Is is he going to be as consistent as Butters? I'm not sure. So I'm not bringing him in just yet. But I think a lot of people are. 11,000 people have traded him in. So break even of 52. He'll easily clear his break even. So this is probably the week to get him because he went down in price last week. He's going to go back up this week. But I'm not fully convinced with him yet. Are you bringing him in? I feel like you might be. I th- Most people are. But was thinking convinced. a straight swap. Yep. Of Clary to oh, Rosie. Yeah. I'd do that if, if I had uh, But my big priority is just to bring in Rankin yes. as my F6. Yep. Well, my final forward that I'm bringing in. So. Nice. Uh, other ones that people are doing is the Charlie Kerno in, which is oh, smart. Yes. I it was awesome, him, yes. awesome yes. last week against the Cats. Mm-hmm. Now playing a Richmond team that's giving up, what, the second most scores, uh, second highest score in, per game in the AFL. Yeah. Uh, he feasts against the, the bottom Crushing it. And Ari Schoenmaker is another big one as a defensive rookie. Playing his second game, I think, this week. Yep. Now that he's been named, I Minus feel pretty good about that. 36 break even, which is awesome. And Billy Dowling, same sort of vibe. Into his second game as well now. This is his third game, rather. So he's on the bubble, Billy Dowling. Yep. Minus 46 break even. Against GWS, interesting to see how he goes, but I it's hope, probably not I a think bad he'll be right home, rookie yeah. if you need to get someone on there. Kind and Brown being dropped really. Yeah. Just I still got Krug's, hopefully, Pfizer. Kruger but, is being named as well, which is very cool. He's so. a big forward, so that's going to be tough. Uh, your VC, what are you doing? Captain C oh, vibes, what do you reckon? I was going Gorn because, I, yeah, I think he can still go well against any team, just he's an absolute Even freak. the big O? Even the big up. He's At not home? that good. Yeah. In this economy? In this economy. In 2024? <laughs> yeah. In this economy, I'm going the big big Gornicus uh, as my vice. And then I'm going to captain Nick Dacos. I think he's going to go really well against Gold Coast. I think he has a, a really Bruce good average. Bruce Free footy against He's projected his 144 against Gold Coast. Bruce Free footy, as we said. Away. That's the only thing I'm worried about. Do they lock him down at home? Yeah. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to go Zorko with the VC on Friday night. Ooh. Projected with 128. Actually, I didn't even think about it. Last, I just don't want to do Zorko ever again. That yeah. was a month ago. He got 66 when I vice captain him. Uh, my captaincy will probably actually might go to Errol. Ooh. Projected a 139 okay. against the uh, against the Dockers at the SCG. I like that. If you've got Grundy, I'd Grundy, just probably chuck yeah. the C on Grundy. Right? I might do vice captain Grundy, yeah. Not a bad one. I unfortunately do not have Grundy. So. Oh, unlucky. Uh, Grundy, great one. In terms of the other projected scores out there, if you – Think about, I don't know, like the other sort of... Sheasel against the dogs. Sheasel at the uh, at Marvel is always a, a decent one. Flanders is the Flanders. highest projected score for, this, uh, for the round at home. 148. Against the, 148 against the Pies. Yep. Errol at 139 is very good. Grundy at 132. Trelaw 132. Rowan Marshall. That's not a bad shot, actually. Against yeah. the Power. Yeah. That's not a bad one. Yeah. Uh, and Bond, 127 against North. I, yeah, he could get but if he's carrying an injury. Yeah, but he he said yeah, that the flu, other yeah, he just ripped off one million points. Exactly. So I don't know. Good stuff. All right, check well, out was... all the official Supercoach stuff for all the official Supercoach gear. Yeah, that'll do us for AFL today for this oh, week, though. Stats boy, what a show! That was a big show. I only talked for eighty-seven hours today. That's brutal. Yeah, you need to get to bed. 
I really do. <laughs> 87 tins and away we go. Uh, but thank you for jumping on, Stats Man. Thank you. Uh, we will have Leo back as well next week, which will be fun. Oh, nice. For the Thursday shows. Uh, but we will be back on Sunday night for the Round 16 Rap Show, which will be very good. So remember to smash a like across all the socials to see us doing lots of fun stuff. The guys are taping some fun shorts today, so get around at Facey, IG, X, TikTok, YouTube, of course, and subscribe to like all of our shows on your podcast app. What is it? The AFL Today Show, of course, this one, Cricket Today Podcast, Football Today Podcast, a cracking NBA Australia, just tiring, absolutely tiring after a <laughs> massive NBA draft. And, of course, hold all tickets for a bit of GG action. Uh, get around them all. Like, I don't know. What do you reckon? Harold Goulden getting around a haircut. Oh, okay. Why not? He's got a good one. He has got a good one. I don't one. mind his hair. <laughs> all right, that's it. We'll catch you on Sunday night for the wrap show of Round 16 for more AFL Today. Until then, look after yourselves and remember, footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.